If you look at heart failure, we understand the pathophysiology extremely well. In fact, we knew a lot way back 50 years ago, but we concentrated on the heart. So the initial treatments of heart failure were all designed to try and increase the strength of cardiac contraction, improve cardiac contractility. And the drug classes that are available back in the 70s increased intracellular calcium or stimulated the adrenoreceptor. And they had problems. It led to arrhythmias and an increase in mortality. So we moved away from trying to improve contractility purely because the first generation of drugs we developed simply kill people. And then we discovered neurohormonal antagonists that didn't have an increased mortality. So people moved away from contractility as a target because we hadn't developed a safe way of improving it. We've understood a lot more about contractility in the last decade or two, and we've realized there are many other complex features in the generation of cardiac force during myocardial contraction. So there's the contractile apparatus itself, the energetics, the control of intracellular calcium level, calcium handling. So that's given a whole range of different targets, including gene therapies, as well as um, small molecules that target the contractile apparatus. Some of them work indirectly via energetics. Some of them work via modifying intracellular calcium. And some of them work directly on the contractile apparatus. And that seems to be the action that seems to have the most attractive mode of action because it can increase the effectiveness of cardiac contraction without necessarily putting a risk of arrhythmias or even increasing myocardial oxygen consumption requirement. Well, the passage to get a drug from a concept through the early clinical trial phases of safety and understanding the pharmacokinetics and pharmacodynamics through to a proper proof of their clinical efficacy is an extremely long path. It can take 12, 15 years. So we have multiple drugs that are in development at the early stage, but the one that's most exciting clinicians at the moment is omicaptin macabal that directly affects the contractile connections between actin and myosin. And that's subject to a major phase three trial, uh, Galactic HF, that should report literally within the next few months. So that will be, if it's positive, a major step forward. The first positive inotropic contractility agent with an effective outcome, if that's what we prove, um, that we've had for, well, ever, but certainly the first positive trial, the first trial that targeted this mechanism for many, many years. The Galactic HF trial is a really interesting trial because it's a major mortality morbidity trial, but it's got some unique features. It's recruiting patients who are stable outpatients with heart failure, but also patients that are still in hospital following an episode of acute decompensation, which means that it's targeting an at-risk group with a high rate of mortality and morbidity in a way that if the trial's positive, will be really attractive because it means that doctors don't have to wait weeks and months till they're stabilized. The other advantage is it's recruited patients who've been excluded from other trials. So it includes patients with lower blood pressures, you know, 85, 90, 95 millimeters of mercury, often excluded from other trials, and includes patients with EGFR, renal function, right down to 20 mils uh, per minute um, per meter squared uh, body surface area, which means it's recruiting patients in whom at the moment we don't have treatments that have been proven to be effective and safe. So it'll expand the range of patients that can be treated if, as we hope, the Galactic HF trial is positive.